Midterms are coming up in less than two months. Louisiana voters will be making their way to the polls in November for the primaries and December for the general elections. We've had an interesting political year thus far with major changes coming out of the White House and the Supreme Court. Here to talk about the latest voter trends is John Cuvion, a political analyst and pollster. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me tonight. So how is Louisiana expected to vote this year? So I would not be surprised if Louisiana goes fairly heavily Republican, given that that has been the trend over over the last decade. And in fact, the Democrats did not even field a candidate in the 4th Congressional District up in Shreveport, so they're not exactly running the same caliber of candidates that they might have, say, 15 years ago. So are there any changes besides that, you know, from the last midterm election that we had? One of the things which I think has been a big paradigm shift is the fact that you have more people since the pandemic started. They're choosing to mail in vote. And in fact, the percentage of those who are mail in voting in Louisiana since the pandemic started has consist consistently rather been uh, a five times what it was before the pandemic. In other words, about 15% of the vote has been cast by mail. And I would expect that in-person early voting will be popular as well. So in other words, you're looking at roughly 30 to 40% of the vote is already going to be cast before November 8th, which is election day. Wow, so that is a major shift from years before. Correct. So whenever you say 15% of people would be sending in mail-in votes, about how many people is that? So what you're looking at, if you want to assume about a 50% voter turnout or about 1.5 million voting, what we're talking about is the potential for there to be 100 to 100 to about 225,000 people voting by mail, which is a pretty heavy volume. So considering all the things that have happened in the White House and in the Supreme Court, a lot of people are paying attention to the demographics of people that are voting. Right. And recently, you know, in 45 states, including red states like Louisiana, people have been noticing more women registering to vote. Yes. Is that expected to cause any change in how people are voting and what they're voting for? The interesting thing about the stories I've been seeing and reading about women being energized to vote, women are not exactly a monolithic voter block in the same way that, say, whites or blacks or Hispanics are. So the first thing I'm going to be looking at in the upcoming weeks when we're talking about not only the fact that there are more women voting is to look at the partisan composition of those registering to vote because you do have Republican women and independent women as well as Democratic women. So that is one of those kinds of things where I need more data to, before I can make a really uh, appropriate uh, judgment call as to which side that benefits more. Why do you think that there's been a focus on this in particular for this midterm election? So what I think has happened is that what was initially going to be an economic issues kind of election now has a flavor of social issues, more specifically abortion. Ever since the Supreme Court decision back in late June, which was leaked in early May, I do think that has provided yet more, I guess, noise as it were as to things that are interesting voters as opposed to before it would have been talking about say the coronavirus p uh, p policies and or inflation and or uh, foreign affairs now uh, abortion is basically becoming an issue in its own right just like inflation has been was this expected for the midterm elections for this to be as big of a you know a topic as it is right now? It was sudden and you know the interesting thing about it was I did not really see any impact when the decision was leaked in early May. If one believes the polls that have been released in August, which is the de the latest data I have at my fingertips, it has benefited Democrats somewhat, but I'm also of the opinion that what goes on in August isn't necessarily what's going to happen after Labor Day when voters are more focused. But I do think it has given a new spring to the Democrats' steps to where instead of it being a 2010 or 2014 style Republican landslide, I could see more modest Republican gains unless Republicans have the ability to get an appreciable share of independent voters and or win back some of those voters who may be attitudinally Republican but voted for Joe Biden. Biden. Those two voter blocks, in my opinion, are going to be the story of election night. So speaking of trends and voting trends, are more people likely to show up at the polls this year, especially, you know, I mean, in spite of all that's been going on with election integrity and people worried about the results? I believe so. And there's a couple of data points that I already have as evidence for that. The first is primary turnout when compared against 2018 is actually two and a half million votes higher and is the highest I've seen going all the way back to 2006 when I'm studying you know, the, the number of people who've actually voted in the primaries. So that's data point number one. Data point number two is I'm seeing an unprecedented level of interest in terms of people wanting to vote early. More specifically, as of this morning, I have seen 270 have already voted 
in Florida, North Carolina, and we have in Florida and North Carolina and Georgia, and that's just data I know about, but in Florida, and North Carolina and Georgia, 200,000 people have already requested a mail-in ballot. So you're talking about people two months in advance of an election who are already ready to vote. And that to me is interesting when you're talking about a midterm election. So I am expected elevated turnout relative to 2018. All right, so midterms are getting very, very, very close. Thank yes. you so much for coming in and giving us all this information. My pleasure.